for a long time, and I mean a long time, I've had more and more people ask me to have more videos about dealing with your mental health when you are on the spectrum. And that's why I brought over a very special guest. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. Typically what I do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to teach you about your mental health, but I also like to increase awareness and provide you with tools, resources, and all of that stuff when it comes to mental health. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, I brought over a very special guest. Her name is Stephanie. She has been a rewired soldier for quite some time and she has autism spectrum disorder. She was diagnosed in her 20s, but uh, I'm gonna let her explain all of that. But anyways, I've had a lot of people ask me about dealing with mental illness or mental health issues while you're on the spectrum. And some of this is from some of my subscribers who are on the spectrum, and some of it is people who have friends or family members who are on the spectrum and you want a better understanding or you wanna know how to help. So like, no matter what, like this is a very important video and I'm gonna link all of Stephanie's uh, channel and everything um, in this video, in the info card, in the end screen, in the description, all that good stuff. But please do me a favor and let like other people know about this video, share it with them because like one of the things that I'm always trying to do is I'm trying to learn about more and more people and what they're going through so I can better help them and be there for them, you know, if they have, you know, different co-occurring disorders or whatever the case may be. Anyways, I'm gonna shut up now and here is Stephanie. Hi Rewired Soldiers, my name is Stephanie and I was diagnosed with high functioning autism at age 23. Today I just wanted to share some tips with you for managing mental health on the spectrum just from my personal experience a huge thank you to Chris for letting me have this moment on his amazing channel so autism typically comes with comorbid conditions so that's basically conditions that typically happen with having autism so a few examples are ADHD bipolar depression and anxiety while I can't personally speak on having bipolar or ADHD I do have experience with depression and anxiety so some of these might be coming from that kind of viewpoint those of us on the autism spectrum tend to have difficulty recognizing and identifying emotions until they're really extreme and on top of that, we have trouble thinking of asking for help. So for me, going through depression and anxiety, I'd be experiencing these things and the thoughts that come with depression, and I experience them almost every single day. I didn't know that this was abnormal. I thought that everyone dealt with this because I had become so used to it. I think it's really important for us to know that it is okay to talk to somebody about a feeling or an emotion or a situation that is bothering us. Do not suffer in silence because you think that it's trivial or you can't quite place it or name it. It's okay if you can't name what it is. I didn't know that it had a name. I didn't know depression was its name or anxiety was its name. You don't always have to have the name for it. Just try to talk to somebody. Now, another thing is communication when things are overwhelming. This is one of those things that on the spectrum, it's just so difficult because we have this tendency to have trouble really putting words together out loud when we're overwhelmed. Some people even have selective mutism, so they can't even speak when they're being overwhelmed, they, they can't get any words out. And if they can, it's very short and not very useful. And for me, when I'm starting to get overwhelmed, I start to go in circles and say things that don't make any sense and repeat myself. And later I realize that I made zero logical sense. And other times I have things that are building up on the inside, things that I've been thinking about, things that have been bothering me, and I just can't seem to like tell somebody it just seems really intimidating. So for me, what I've learned how to do is to try to write it out. So for me, I'm a lot better at writing things down or typing things up than I am with speaking. It just lets me kind of put all of what's in here out onto a paper or a document or whatever, and it lets me express it without having to 
I don't know, something about it is just less intimidating. So you might try that the next time that something's going on or you're feeling overwhelmed or you want to try to communicate, but it's just really hard or you feel intimidated to try writing it down and see if that helps. My third tip for you is to realize and remember that emotions and even relationships can come and go in waves. We really like things to be constant, consistent, and in the place that they belong. So a lot of times we put permanence on things because we want things to work like that, but emotions just don't. So for me, it's something I like to remind myself, you know, when I feel down after feeling really happy for a long time, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna be stuck being down forever because sometimes it seems like any change means this change one is you know, out of control and it's just impossible to deal with and that change seems like forever now because everything should be forever. But that's just not how it is. It's okay to know that we're gonna have happiness and we're gonna have times where we're not happy. We're gonna have times where we're frustrated. We're gonna have times when we're down, we're depressed, maybe we're anxious but that those things don't have to stay that way. This also extends to relationships. So sometimes when someone is short with us or we get in an argument with them, it can feel like the absolute end of the world. It's like the end of the relationship. They don't love you anymore. All these feelings come because you think that that thing is permanent. Well, it's not. Just like their good mood didn't last forever or agreement didn't last forever, this disagreement and this bad mood or whatever it is don't last forever. And a lot of times the next day the person is just fine even though it seemed like the end of the world yesterday. It's also really important to accept the fact that we are different. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the neurotypical versus neuroatypical, but people with autism are considered neuroatypical. Basically, your brain works differently than maybe the typical person. So there are times and there are things that we are going to do differently. We're going to handle situations differently and we have needs that are different. Now, I wasn't diagnosed until I was 23. So for the longest time, I thought that one day I would wake up and I would be just like everyone else. One day I would reach this moment and I would understand socializing and I would understand all the things that everyone else understood. I thought somehow when I became an adult, it would all just click and it didn't. And I wasn't normal like everyone else and Sometimes we can hold ourselves to the standard of a normal person or a neurotypical person. The fact of the matter is we are not neurotypical and that is okay. We have different weaknesses and different strengths. It's okay to accept that. It's okay to accept that and start to learn how to deal with that. It's just really important to understand that you're never going to be so-and-so, but you are going to be you. And that's okay that you have different needs and that you think differently. Learn how to embrace those things and make those things your strengths instead of perceived weakness because it's different. And my final tip to you is to try to be become more conscious of the things that fuel you and exhaust you. Now, as someone on the spectrum, I'm aware that it is not always easy to understand what's going on with your body or to pay attention to what's going on with your body or your mind or anything like that. Because, you know, you don't understand why you're having a meltdown, but maybe it's because you didn't eat in 12 hours. Just things like this, we tend to overlook and not really understand why we're being overwhelmed all of a sudden. So take a time to start to notice like, oh, after this thing I feel really exhausted, or oh, after this thing I feel really excited and bright and happy and ready to take on the world. So when you start taking note of those things and you see like your daily schedule or what you have to do in the future, you can start to prepare yourself for the things that exhaust you by being able to maybe set a little bit of time away to take some sort of break or those things that excite you maybe you can kind of mix them in with the things that exhaust you knowing what's going to maybe even overstimulate you for you to be able to take a moment and prepare maybe you have something with you like I personally have a weighted blanket I take that to my church on the Sundays because my Sundays are very long and very exhausting and I know that I get overwhelmed by the things that happen and they're also happening really close together so 
as a functioning human being in society, I still have to do those things, but I can take some time with a little bit of preparation to maybe lay down for a few minutes with my weighted blanket because I know that's going to help me calm down and reset and be able to take on those other things that usually exhaust me or overwhelm me. So I think it's really important to be able to take note of those things so that you can thrive in this place that seems to be made for neurotypicals instead of just surviving it. Again, thank you so much to Chris for letting me have this moment to talk to you all and now I'll give it back to him. All right, thank you so much, Stephanie, for taking some time out of your day to make this guest video for my channel. And like, I learned a lot. I am constantly learning. Like, like for people who wonder why I read so many books and things like that, it's like, I love learning. Like, my, my main goal in life is to help as many people as possible, but if I don't understand what specific uh, people are going through, like, I don't know how to help them or be there for them in the best way possible. So even just watching Stephanie's video, like, I learned a lot more about what somebody on the spectrum might be dealing with. You know what I mean? And I think what happens is, especially if you have a loved one, friend, family member, coworker, whoever it is, who is, um, you know, diagnosed with like autism spectrum disorder, like, for me, it makes more sense, you know, when they get, you know, uh, angry, frustrated, depressed, anxious, whatever the case is. And I absolutely love what Stephanie did in this video. Like, if you want to talk about a rewired soldier, I loved how Stephanie provided different tips and tools for how to manage these things when you're dealing with, you know, various issues, right? Like, I absolutely loved how she talked about, like, you know, writing things down can help you identify what's going on and all of these other things. But I think the biggest takeaway from this is, guess what? Mindfulness, all right? A lot of what Stephanie was talking about is mindfulness. So mindfulness is being present in the moment and understanding what's happening right now. So like Stephanie was talking about, sometimes it's hard to identify with, you know, different uh, emotions, or she even mentioned sometimes it's, you know, something that uh, is because, you know, she uh, she was hungry and hadn't eaten all day. I like how she talked about when, you know, how she prepares, like going to church can be very overwhelming because it's a very long day. So she plans ahead. This is something like, whether you're on the spectrum or not, this is something that we can all benefit from. It's something that I do. Like, I know that I get anxious, like going into very crowded places like going to the mall or you know even grocery shopping like when the store is packed something that i have to manage so like i prepare in my own ways i'm like okay you're gonna have to like do this be prepared to do this mindfulness technique while you're in the store or in this crowded place or whatever it is so i'm very very appreciative like how stephanie had these tips and various solutions talked a little bit of mindfulness too all right but anyways again please share this video with other people so more people understand what people with autism spectrum disorder might be dealing with all right and make sure you go check out stephanie's channel she has a lot a lot of videos about how to deal with symptoms of autism as well as asperger's okay but anyways that's all i got with this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because i make a ton of videos and a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on patreon and make sure you go check out stephanie's channel and go subscribe by clicking or tapping right there all right so thanks again stephanie for being a guest on my channel and i'll see y'all next time